In this short video, I'm going to show you how you can use Pocket Lab to understand how a ball moves in three dimensions. And we're going to use a soccer ball as an example. So we're not going to go into the physics of um, three-dimensional motion, uh, but I will show you how you can set up an experiment and what kind of data you can expect to see. So let's start with a conceptual understanding of what we're going to see. You can see we already have our Pocket Lab app up and running, but uh, we'll get to that in just a second. So, I want to start out with a diagram of a soccer ball, and then I have a real-life soccer ball here. And you can see that the axes in the diagram correspond to the axes on, uh, drawn on the soccer ball. So when we talk about three-dimensional motion, the soccer ball can move um, along the x, y, or z axis. So we call that translation. So it can translate like this, like this, or in and out of the screen. Similarly, we have um, three axes uh, built into the accelerometer of our pocket lab. So our axes correspond to, um, to the same colors um, and the same designation. We have X in red, uh, Y in Z, and, or sorry, Y in blue, and Z in green. And so I'm going to insert Pocket Lab into the soccer ball so that our um, axes line up. Okay. Now, uh, when I go to uh, my data screen, if I click on the accelerometer, I will see uh, what the motion is in the three dimensions of, that are lined up with the axes on my soccer ball. So if I start to shake it in the X direction, and it's difficult for me to do this perfectly, uh, you can see the oscillation in our X data, so the red data. Now, if I were to move this up and down Y, you can see um, the change in, in the blue data. And then if I were to uh, move the ball mostly in the Z axis in and out of the screen, you can see how that data changes. And because my hands aren't super steady and I can't exactly align my motion with any one direction, you see data in the other axis. Now, obviously if the ball is moving, it's not necessarily going to be moving in a single axis. So that's okay because we can use these three components, um, the X, Y, and Z, to represent motion in any direction. So if the ball starts to go off um, sort of in a direction that's uh, at an angle to all of the uh, axes, we'll see data in um, all three graphs, in X, Y, and Z. And that's what we should expect. And the beauty of having these three values is that we can represents the motion of the ball in any direction. So um, any translation that will happen, any acceleration that occurs, uh, we have uh, enough data to represent that motion. Okay, so that's translation. There's another aspect to this, um, and that's rotation. So let me pull back our diagram. And the ball can not only move in three dimensions, it can rotate um, about each of the axes. So it can rotate about X, about Y, and about Z. And that's represented on the screen with these, with these arrows, uh, these circular arrows. So we, if we want to understand uh, how the ball is moving, most of the time it's not just going to be uh, purely translating. It's going to be moving through space while it rotates. So if you imagine a soccer player kicking the ball, it's not just going to move um, while staying in this orientation. It's, he's going to impart spin on it. And the um, accelerometers, uh, they are built to measure uh, just linear motion. But we can use the gyroscope to understand the rotation of the soccer ball. So I'm going to 
click back over to um, our pocket lab data and I'm going to click on the gyroscope and what you should see is we have um, very little rotation right now um, that's just noise from me shaking a little bit but now if I rotate about the x-axis if you remember x is in red you can see a large signal in that graph and we have a convention for positive and negative rotation uh, which is according to the right hand rule which you don't need to understand to, but just know that one direction is negative and one direction is positive just by convention and so we can also rotate about the y-axis see that in blue and the z-axis which you see in green and then much in the same way that uh, it would be very difficult to just move uh, in one axis uh, it would be also difficult to just kick the ball rotating about a single axis but since we have these three uh, measurements if our ball is rotating about some other act like some other direction we can use the data from all three sensors to represent that motion. And if you notice that um, if I just purely translate the ball, there's really not much signal um, from the gyroscope. And that's what we expect. Uh, we do see a little bit because my hand's not perfectly steady. But the gyroscope is really measuring when the ball starts to rotate. So using both the accelerometer and the gyroscope, we can uh, understand how a soccer ball can move in three dimensions. So uh, fire up your pocket lab, um, and then uh, watch the data as you um, move the ball around. Um, try kicking it and seeing how fast it spins and about what axis it's spinning. Uh, and then you can also look at what is the acceleration um, when you kick the ball both softly and really um, get your foot into it. Uh, so come back for more videos uh, that we'll post later. Thanks.